what is class? In linguistics, what, when we use the word class, what we mean is we're referring to a set of entities sharing the same properties. They can be formal properties. They may have to do with the form or they may have to do with the semantics. It can be semantic properties. So the word class has derivations. One classifies, classify being the verb. One classifies things into classes and this is called classification. For example, one can classify morphemes into form classes or is it morph classes or morph or form or form, yes. And in the same way, you can classify words into word classes. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Word class or word class with a space or a hyphen. There's different schools of linguistics. In Halidean linguistic theory, there are four main categories. Class is one of them. The other three are structure, unit, and system. In this theory, class is a set of items having the same possibilities of operation and structure. For example, there is a class of nominal groups that can operate as subject, object, etc. in clause structure. In structure linguistics, another school of linguistics, classification is a feature with which phones are classified into phonemes, morphs, and morphemes, etc. In another school of linguistics, which is called generative linguistics, natural class has a central role in some models of phonology. Again, it's the idea of grouping things together based on similar features, similar properties. There's the word classifier in grammar, which is a morpheme that functions to indicate the formal or semantic class of a set of items. For example, the ly suffix in English is considered to be an adverb classifier, or the suffix ess is a femininity classifier. Tiger, tigress, that's femininity. So that's the use of the word classifier in that class. In many languages, such as Chinese, Vietnamese, Hopi. So in those languages, one of the important features of the language itself is to mark lexical items as belonging to the same semantic class. In those languages, the idea of semantic class is very important. In sign language, class is a term used for handshape, the handshape that functions for nominality for a class of objects. For example, a class of vehicle. Now we go back to the main idea of the video, which is class in grammar, or word class. In grammar, everybody's favorite topic, <laughs> not everybody, but at least you have two groups of people. Like some people say, I love grammar. And then there's this other group, I hate grammar. So at least there is something that brings us together. We can either love it or hate it. What is the significance of class for grammar? In grammar, we have the idea of word class. Words. What does that mean? It means that the different words of the same language are divided into different word classes. First of all, there's this broad classification of words into open and closed. So you have an open class of words and a closed class of words. The closed class of words are the class of words that are fixed or limited in number, which is pronouns, prepositions, conjunctions, articles. And when you say, when you talk about the open class, it means they're not limited or fixed in number. So that's a broad, broader category, but I'm going to get more specific. But you need to know that when you talk about classes, you may also talk about subclasses. For example, an example of word class in grammar is nouns. So nouns are a word class. But within noun, the noun word class, you may have subclasses such as collective nouns. For example, words like government, army, club, jury, public, etc. These are collective nouns. And an interesting property of these nouns is that they may be used with a singular or plural verb. Although, in terms of form, they are singular. For example, you can say the committee is wrong or you can say the committee are wrong. So you have the idea of class and you also have the idea of subclass. In traditional grammar, they had the term part of a speech, which is what we mean when we say word class. In traditional grammar, which was based off of Greek and Latin, there were eight word classes. Noun, pronoun, verb, adverb, adjective, preposition, conjunction, and interjection. And sometimes you could add certain categories to these. 
In the word class system, in a language, the individual elements, for example, the words, are classified into groups based on their properties. Words that belong to the same word class are similar in the way they function in syntax or in what they contribute to meaning. In traditional grammar, word classes or parts of speech were defined primarily based on their semantic properties. In modern linguistics, however, a word class is defined primarily by its role in syntactic structure. In English, traditionally, they say there are eight parts of speech, eight word classes. Nouns, determiners, pronouns, verbs, adjectives, adverbs, prepositions, and conjunctions. But what about other languages? How many word classes are there? Are there eight word classes in each and every language? Or are they different? What about your specific language, your, your native language? How many word classes do you have? In Turkish and also Persian, for example, the exact word that you use as an adjective without adding anything to it, you can use it as an adverb. Let me give you an example. You can say good girl in Turkish, iyi bir kiz, and then you can say she speaks good, iyi konuşuyor. Even in colloquial English you can say that, she speaks good, instead of she speaks well. Here, when you say good and it modifies a noun, which is a girl, she's a good girl, that becomes an adjective. But when you say she speaks good, good modifies a verb and it functions as an adverb. Now the question is, when that happens, if the words are the same form but they function differently, should we classify them as different word classes or can we say that in Turkish and Persian there are no adverbs and they have maybe seven word classes instead of eight? In Persian, for example, you can say Sedaya Boland, which is loud. Then you can say Boland Guft, which means she said it loudly. So the same word in Persian, Boland, which is loud, can mean loud or loudly. So this is just some food for thought, but I would be glad if you can discuss this in relation to your own language or the language you know best. That was basically an introductory video into word class.